Industrial melanism is a classic topic in evolutionary biology. When Charles Darwin published The Origin of Species, one of the critical missing pieces of evidence was an actual demonstration of natural selection occurring in the wild. And in the 1950s, Henry Kettlewell provided that first really well-documented example. The forests of Europe had been blackened by soot from the Industrial Revolution. And Kettlewell realized that peppered moths that normally were light gray in color were usually black in the areas where the soot had really darkened the trees. He suggested this was due to camouflage, that the light colored moths were very obvious against the black trees and so were eaten by birds. And he provided the evidence to show that that was what was really going on. My colleagues and I have found a similar pattern a correlation between black colours and pollution, but in a very different kind of an animal, in a sea snake living in the Indo-Pacific. The turtle-headed sea snake in Mitocephalus annulatus is widespread through Asian and uh, Indo-Pacific areas, living on coral reefs. In most of its range, it's speckled in colour or banded black and white. But in inshore reefs of Nemea, in the Pacific island of New Caledonia, where I've worked on the species for many years, most of the individuals are jet black. In less polluted areas of New Caledonia, they're banded. And in Australia, most populations consist of banded individuals, except for one site that's used as a bombing range by the military and has been for many years. And in that site, the snakes are black. So why would we see this correlation between black colour and polluted habitats? It can't be camouflage, uh, the snakes really aren't living against a black background. And my collaborator Claire Gorin had an idea. She read a paper about the pigeons of Paris. They tend to be black in colour and some research there had shown that black colours, the melanin in black feathers, actually bind to trace metals like arsenic and zinc and lead and copper. And so having black feathers actually enables a pigeon to excrete some of those trace elements. When the feathers are lost, when the bird sheds its feathers, then it gets rid of some of those potentially harmful pollutants. And Claire thought that perhaps the same thing was going on in our sea snakes. That could explain why they were black in polluted areas. So she collected shed skins from the snakes and our collaborator Paco Bustamante from uh, France analysed the trace elements. Sure enough, very, very high levels of trace element pollution in the skins of our snakes and more in the darker skin than paler skin. Even when the sample came from the same snake, the darker skin always had more pollutants. And our ecological study showed that the black snakes actually shed their skin more often than the banded snakes that live in the same areas. The black skin attracts algal spores that like to settle out on a dark background. And so black snakes accumulate more and more algae and that induces them to shed more often. So in combination, being black in a polluted area means that you shed your skin more often and every time you do, you lose more trace elements. And this could be a benefit to a snake living in such an area. So we have the, what looks like the same pattern, a correlation between black color and polluted areas in peppered moths and in pigeons and in sea snakes. But in the peppered moths, it looks to be driven by natural selection for camouflage against predators. And in the pigeons and the sea snakes, it looks like black color enables an individual to get rid of toxic trace elements that otherwise could cause problems for its health.